giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now, FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Now FTC is a platform to keep up to date on live and archive first tech challenge events and team stats at theorangealliance.org. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello everyone and welcome to FTC Recap. Tonight we have the last string of events to recap before the World Championship. Uh, everyone get hyped. Uh, tonight is just Shishir and I and we're going to be recapping the last few state championships as well as dive into a good handful of the international championships that have taken place. If you have any questions that you'd like to be read during the show, please tag at first updates now and tag, uh, type your question into chat. Hey there guys, I'm Shishir. Um, so as we've had very recently, we have a few more giveaways from Go Build Up. Uh, they're very generous in giving us a lot of giveaways. So tonight we will be giving away two people, uh, two packs of Hyper Hubs. So yeah, two people will win two Hyper Hubs. So Tyler, can you read it? Uh, tell our viewers how they're able to win tonight. Absolutely. So once again, thanks to Go Build Up for the sweet giveaways. And uh, I know, uh, guys, uh, it might be a little bit slower show tonight, so you have any more chance to win is what that means. So uh, all you have to do, by the way, is make sure you click the little follow button near the top of the channel, or you can be like Eric8417 there, uh, who just resubbed for a second month, and he's going to get five times chance to win uh, for the uh, Go Build Up giveaway. So we'll, we'll do the drawing twice, by the way. Uh, I think we're going to do them both at the same time. Is that right? Yeah, probably. Stuff, right? Okay, um, so so it'll be a keyword you know, you'll have to put in later during the show, and uh, just type that in. You can spam as many times as you want, but you only get one entry, and then you'll have your opportunity to win, and we'll draw that uh, a couple times during as well. So good luck to everybody. Can't wait to show off more. Uh, go build up here on FTC Recap. All right, so the uh, first event that we're going to jump into comes from the U.S. North. So we only had one event this past month in the uh, U.S. North region, uh, the best region of them all, in my opinion. Uh, this That event that took place was the Indiana State Championship, uh, which occurred two weeks ago. We saw 12-8-35 Pixelated take home the Inspire Award, so congrats to them. Uh, qualification matches were pretty impressive and competitive, with four teams going 5-0. and uh, And 12-3-31 Warrior Tech uh, had a 330.08 OPR, which is the second highest OPR in the world, uh, right behind 86-80 Crack and Pinion. Um, and for those uh, stats nerds out there, we are talking about uh, OPR, OPR. This is not OPR, uh, non-penalty OPRC or uh, non-penalty OPR. Um, so that is a little higher than what the um, FTC stats rankings is. This data comes from the Orange Alliance. Um, so not surprisingly, um, Warrior Tech won the event along with 12.835 Pixelated and 98.62 Control Alt Destroy. Uh, <laughs> What I'll say I gotta quickly, say, I like that. I like that name. <laughs> oh, that name is great. What I'll say quickly before uh, Shishir goes and uh, recaps the West is uh, I don't have any match videos for Indiana. I actually don't have any of match videos for any of the events that I am um, recapping tonight. So when you're at your events, make sure you take match videos. Send them to the Orange Alliance. Contact at theorangealliance.org. Uh, throw them in the Fun FTC chat. Uh, get those to us so that we can show your great robots on air. Um, Absolutely. Just, I mean, for, for us at least, just post it on YouTube also. Um, it's really, it, it really helps like the community as a whole understand where the competition, how the competition is doing across the entirety of the United States. And it really brings the community to closer together. So definitely, if you guys go to competition, notice there's no live stream or anything like that. Do take a few, to, to just take a few match videos and put that in the chat or put that wherever you need to. Um, so now we're going to go into the West. Um, Nathan has his favorite region. I have my favorite region. Um, this is mine. Would you so say that gonna... you're the best of the West? Ha <laughs> ha, there you go, there you go. Uh, we're coming for you, FRC. We got, we got the names now. All right, so we're going to go, um, we're going to start down south with uh, the Los Angeles and SoCal, uh, Southern California Regional Championship. Um, this was actually a two-division event, so it was quite, quite large, and it had some really dominant teams from across the region um, battle it out for that top spot. 
Uh, in there were two divisions: the Odyssey division and the Galileo division. So on the Odyssey division, team one zero two nine eight, the Brainstorms, took the top spot, picking team forty six twenty six, the Kings and Queens, and ninety five twelve, the Hippie Bots. On the Galileo side, rookie team one four nine two one, Alpha Omega, took the number one seed and picked fifty nine twenty one, La Canada Engineering Club, and ninety eight seventy three. Oh, Canada. Sorry. La Canada Engineering Club and 9873 Pika Tech. Both of these alliances actually made it out of their div- division, so they were both the number one seeds. But the Odyssey Division's winner, uh, to, uh, the Odyssey Division's winner actually took the entire thing, um, taking home that gold. Congratulations to all the teams playing. So, Shishir, just a quick question uh-huh. about California, just in general for FTC. Mm-hmm. Why don't you think? I'm just looking at these scores here in the finals. Finals one was uh, 312 to 266, and finals two was 397 to 229. Why, in your kind of mind, why isn't California as uh, competitive in FTC as, say, like FRC with some of the big names, 330, 254, list can goes up, goes on? That's actually a very valid question. Um, I think that one of the things is that it's it's. Uh, I, I'll preface this. I think California has a fair share. Uh, uh, I, I will say that I think that Canada, I mean, sorry, California has had it's more than its fair share of um, dominant teams with teams like Vulcan Robotics out of NorCal and uh, Bomb Squad who are consistently playing quite well out of the uh, Southern California area. But I do think, um, just as a whole, FTC is um, not as consistent. I guess, as FRC, because the teams come, they go, members graduate out, members come back in. It's it's less of a kind of, I guess, it's less of a mainstay, per se. So um, I think that California, this is somewhat, maybe somewhat of a weak year. I, I think that we still have to see It's not like FRC, where these powerhouses can stay for 10, 20 years at a time. All right. Um, so I think we're going to move on to the next division, uh, which was, uh, now, like, I know I have my favorite region, but I actually have my favorite state. Uh, we're going to go into Oregon. So, um, we're going to move into, uh, Oregon, which actually had a very, which it had quite a unique season this year. It was pretty eventful. Um, due to inclement weather in February, all of the Oregon super qualifier events were actually canceled causing our affiliate partner to actually expand the Oregon State Championship to 64 teams. Um, actually, that's only eight teams less than the Super Regional the, the, than the Super Regionals that we've been having. So it was an insane event, really, uh, really big, really... Um, it was honestly pretty fun. Um, but with this came many, uh, I guess, challenges, right? Because with a lot of these teams, um, this is only a state championship. So you're going to have a lot of weak teams that have to come in when you're, when you don't have another qualifying event. So, um, uh, but, uh, going into it, right. Um, our, on the timber division, there were two divisions, timber and tech on the tim- timber division, my team, team 12808 ranked first, picking up our sister team, one, two, five, nine, nine overcharged and, uh, 8949, the gifted gears for our Alliance on the other division, the tech division, 8045 affiliate formerly known as the Gromits Gromits, um, really, really strong team out of Oregon, uh, picked up 9851C4 and 8720. That's a lot of damage to round out their alliance. Um, on the tech side, the alliance had to battle it out, going to a rubber match, I think, both times. Um, and they were actually, they had, the number one seed was able to clinch their slot to the interdivision finals. On the timber side, it was a bit of an easier pathway with uh, the timber division uh, number one alliance uh, sweeping the entire division. Timber was also able to sweep the interdivision finals, keeping Oregon's five-year-long Timber division winning streak alive. Um, in addition, I uh, want to give another hearty congr- congratulations to Team 11089, Bites of Kit Kats, for winning the Oregon State Inspire Award, a truly well-deserved award. Some of these names are just crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they quite are. I like, I don't know, I've seen, I've seen some fun ones, right? Like 8720, um, that's a lot of damage, obviously, pretty it's funny. Um, one thing that's pretty unique about them is they like to change their name, I think, almost every year. So uh, it's nice that this is what they came up with this year, and I can't wait to see what they come up with in future seasons. Yeah, that, that's actually an interesting thing, and maybe something we should could talk about another time, <clears throat> because my school has had FOL teams for 10 years now, we, we wow. have uh, four numbers for our school, and every single year, that the, every one of those teams has been in existence, we have changed our name, mm-hmm. because it's yep. just like a fun thing. The team's a little it different is. every year, so you change your name. It's so like one of our team names was Nerd Alert, but it was N.E.R.E, so it was 
next level, uh, next dash level, excellent, oh, uh, again, robotic, like, uh, I don't even, awesomeness, something like that. <laughs> next level robotic awesome, something. And we had the coolest shirts. It was like a alert. I have it in my closet. I could probably grab it in a minute. Um, yeah. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. See, I feel like I mean, obviously, we can go into this a little more depth. But in my opinion, I think it's really a trade off between like your team sort of spirit and the way that your team is versus sort of the brand recognition or like the um, the sort of uh, the the mainstay capability of your team in in your community. Um, I know that that's sort of why a lot of these top FRC teams, like going back, harping back to FRC, I think that's why a lot of them have such intensive branding documents, right? Like um, so many, like I know that our sister team has one, uh, helps them get that imagery, our sister team, uh, it helps them get that imagery award every almost every year. And like uh, other kind of um, other other main teams have such strong and such consistent branding because they want to maintain that presence. But at the same time, it sort of detracts from the creative expression of the the students. So really is a it's sort of a push and pull. And I'd, I'd love to talk about that in a future uh, <laughs> show. Yeah. And I'll just follow up one more time and say my team, uh, we kind of hate our logo. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if people try to see if I have a button. I don't uh, offhand. But it's just a uh, just a giant gear. Um, and my mentor has been like thinking about changing it and all this, and I'm like, no, like the brand, like that's right. that's everything right. that's had our logo for the last ten years now is obsolete. Um, so yeah, there is that trade off of like, our, what does the our name even mean? None of us know because we didn't create it. It was created ten years ago. Um, and then the logo, what does it mean? How does it represent our team? But like at the same time, that's kind of what we came into. So. I'll let you continue on with Washington. <laughs> Absolutely. But no, it's, it's a very fair point. Um, but yeah, let's, let's move on. Let's move into the, um, Washington, let's move into the Washington state championship. So we're going to go even further North up, uh, from Oregon. And we, over here, um, we see this, uh, it's a, it's a smaller event. It's a single division event. Um, but it was actually supposed to be in the first or second week of February. Um, it's pretty, uh, uh, pretty interesting that this, um, this tournament actually went, um, it, it, it just like the Oregon tur- Oregon championships, um, Washington also had inclement weather and they rescheduled it to almost five weeks later. So, um, pretty, it, quite a bit later. And that really gave the teams, of uh, the teams of Washington, a lot of time to sort of iterate and improve. So going into this tournament, we were really expecting a lot and they really did deliver after qualifications team one, 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 three, eight robo eclipse took the, um, took the number, took the number one seed and picked 80, uh, 89. 23 perpetual velocity um uh per, perpetual velocity and a 6559 geared reaction um the number two seed we had the reigning world champs actually one two six one one tech nova pick 8103 null robotics and 6220 centripetal these two alliances were able to make it to the finals and actually made it to a rubber match. Blue Alliance won one, Red Alliance won one. But unfortunately, in that rubber match, Team 8103 had a heartbreaking disconnect, causing them to lose and be the finalist alliance. Congratulations to Robo Eclipse's winning alliance. Really, really impressive performance by them. And also congratulations to Technova12611 um, for taking home that gold-silver with the Inspire Award of Washington State. So... Uh, I do want to, I do want to give a few shout outs and whatnot. Um, honestly, like, uh, uh, it was 8103, like really had a strong robot. And, uh, of course I really want to talk about a little bit about their contribution to basically the FTC community, like the national FTC community as a whole. It was very heartbreaking to see you guys not make it so narrowly. They were like the next slot to make it. Um, really, really hoping to see what you guys uh, could come up with next year. So great job and very unfortunate that you weren't able to make it. All right. So now we're going to move just a little bit into the Idaho state championship. Um, Idaho, uh, Idaho, it's it's an open championship. It's one of the uh, actually the only open championships in like the the northwest region, like between Washington, Oregon, Idaho. So because of that, we do see actually a few teams that come in um, that are pretty pretty strong. Uh, I know that one team that we generally consistently see, we didn't see them this year, was Redneck Robotics. Um, but we we did have some heavy hitters. So team one two five uh, one two three five seven inconceivable, who's well known for this. Uh, uh, they're they're like. Triple split button velocity vortex. Um, 
ranked first, actually, picking a team 1, 2, 3, 8, 4, Checkmate, and 1, 2, 3, 5, 3, Techno Lots. Um, this alliance swept through the elimination, taking home that gold after just four matches. In addition, congratulations to that ro- that uh, heavy hitter that I was just talking about, Team 5667, the Robo Miners, for winning that Inspire Award. Is it common for uh, state championships to only have five matches for qualification? Yep. Uh, yep. Man. That's what, five, that's... five or six. That's oh, it. you guys have six. Yeah, no, we, yeah. Uh, Oregon has always only had five. Yeah, Illinois has switched. We had six, I believe, last year and two years ago. We had five this year in the events that I'm about, just about to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, New York City State Championship or Region Championship had six. So, but it's usually Absolutely. five. What time does this event end at typically, like approximately? So, at least for Illinois or what I know, uh, most state championships are. Friday night judging and inspection and like load in or Friday afternoon, Saturday, everything else happens. Alliance selection, judge interviews in the pit, uh, your five calls matches and you're done by five or six. So, yep. I mean, just ask. So I, a couple of weeks ago I was, uh, at first in Michigan for FRC and because they're a district event, uh, they, they get, they went to like eight, 9 PM. <laughs> For like their their first, I mean, it's a two day thing, right? Versus like one for you guys, but like, why not just make the events run a couple more hours and let teams have like eight qualification matches? It seems very difficult to me. I mean, in FRC, God, we complain if we get less than ten, even though it's over a two day period. Like, I it makes more sense to me to to have you know seven eight matches or something like that. So I think there's, I, yeah. I guess for me, there's two factors at play. Uh, the first big one, but it's it would be easy to change is actually written in the rule book is that you have a minimum of five maximum of six matches at an event um for ftc uh that is thrown away at champs though and actually at super regionals it was where you would end up having i think nine uh mm-hmm. um and then i think the second biggest thing is not a lot of ftc teams or yeah, not a lot of ftc teams are super heavily funded and so if you were going to run an event till eight or nine at night then that's an extra day of a hotel room for teams. And I know that at least at Illinois, there's a few teams that every once in a while don't even come on Friday night and they get there early, early in the morning and do judging Saturday morning or even skip judging and inspection Saturday morning. Um, so staying an extra night is pretty costly for teams. And, but yeah, I agree with these. Uh, I, I agree with like the cost concerns and whatnot, but this is really why... FTC ranking and that kind of stuff is so based on luck. Like I know, I know everyone's heard. Like everyone pr- always talks about how FTC is based on luck, and like the rankings don't really mean anything. And it's really because we don't have enough matches for them to mean anything. Um, like I know that in Oregon, right? We got very lucky um, because we had these sixty-four teams, right? Like our, our division was thirty-two, and there were just so many teams that weren't able to do much if anything at all. And so we got lucky in the sense that it was oftentimes of a, a one, like a one V two or a, like a one V three where we were the only robot that were, that was actually scoring anything. And the other robots were either disconnected or driving around and parked in the crater during end game. Um, it's so it's really so much based on luck. I know that some, some really good teams um, dropped in the rankings, like team 8372 TNT, honestly, one of the strongest mineral scoring robots of the competition, they they dropped to rank 20 because they just had an unfortunate match schedule and their alliance partners weren't able to actually do much. And so they, they just – it was very unfortunate for the way that their schedule stacked up. And that's really what the problem is with only having five, elimin- five qualification matches and having this kind of scoring system. It's really unfortunate. I'd say it's also a little bit like culture. All right. I mean mm-hmm. say we don't, you can probably agree we don't have the culture where it's like matches, 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 matches. It's like true. have some fun, win a few awards. Like true, it's true. Why There's, the hell I, can't you have both? Uh, I, I, would love, I agree. I mean, you can have lots of fun and both. lots of matches, right? Like, I mean, exactly. that would be worth it. I'd love if state See, if state championships me, matches equal fun. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. I'd love if state championships would be like, or at least for Illinois, Friday Friday night, Saturday Sunday. I know Michigan goes Thursday night, Friday Saturday. Uh, I mean, they need to have two days for their state championship because they have, like, 96 teams there. Wow. Wow. Um, 
Yeah, honestly, for me too, right? Like, Oregon is Saturday and Sunday. Um, and like, it's and Saturday is a half day. It's just like the judging and the thing that um, the thing that Nathan was just talking about. And like, my question is, why? Is it because? Uh, well, I understand the logistics aspect of it. Let me don't get that wrong. I understand that the affiliate partners have a lot of trouble finding these venues, especially because it's basketball season and whatnot, right? I agree. But at the same time, why are we being restricted so much? I, at least in my opinion, I feel like we're being restricted so much in how much we're actually able to play that we're not really able to demonstrate our robot or we're not able to utilize this thing that we've created for so long, for like months, um, to the full ex fullest extent possible. Yep, agreed. Um, all right, so let's move on to the U.S. East region. Uh, New York has had all of their... Sorry. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry has had all of their state championships as the state is split into a few regions. And then New Jersey also had their championship. Um, so we're going to start off with the entire, maybe you can help me out with the pronunciation, Excelsior? Excelsior? Excelsior, right? Excelsior. Maybe. Sounds about right. New York championship. That's uh, like so what no Stan Lee used to say. God, man, I've, you don't know who Stan Lee is or what? We, okay, we, we know, know who Stan Lee is. All right. Lee is. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, how old am I? <laughs> But, like, I don't know what the Stanley used to say references from. He, what he, he always would say Excelsior. Ah. Okay. All right. Well, I guess at the old Excel man Tyler needs some head stuff moved on, I guess. <laughs> uh, just turn on Disney Channel, Tyler. Um, <laughs> at the, Ex <laughs> the Excelsior New York State Championship, or the Region Championship, there were no teams that went undefeated in qualification matches. And seven teams actually proceeded with a four and one record. This is kind of what we were just talking about. Um, seven teams with a four and one record. Maybe we should have had a few more matches to see who's actually the top team. Um, so the finals saw the number one alliance comprised of 53, 56 TARDIS, uh, 54, 85 Gorilla Bots, and 77, 43 Lansing Bobcats face off against the number three alliance of. Uh, 54, 84, 83, 97, and 15, 0, 54, where the number three alliance took the win in two matches. Um, the Inspire Award winner was 12, 8, 33, Mechanical Meltdown, so congratulations to them. Uh, we're going to move right on, staying in the state of New York uh, at the SBPLI Championship um, through... Oh, sorry. Um... The event wasn't as competitive as the other events that we've seen in New York, though the only 5-0 team was 11-9-88 uh, Luhai Robotics. Is that how you pronounce it? Yep. Uh, who had an OPR of 149.9. Um, the Inspire Award winner was 11-5-17 Digital Darlings, and the winning alliance was comprised of 10-7-38 SBS Bears, 64-38 uh, Syndicate, and 14-6-19 Oh, God, Sios said Elite, uh, who were on the second-seeded alliance. Uh, sticking with a third event in New York, so the last New York championship was the New York City Championship, which was pretty competitive with, with three teams going 6-0. and uh, The final saw the number one alliance comprised of 60-51 Quantum Mechanics, 41-47 Atomic Theory, and 11-1-84 Obsidian Fortress faced the number two alliance comprised of... 10-3-92, uh, the Rolling Drones, 92-95, Speedy, and 10-3-93, Pink Droid. Um, the number one alliance won both matches, with finals one being 4-0-4 uh, to one ninety one. And the Inspire winner of this event was 60-51, Quantum Mechanics. Uh, so congratulations wow. to them. That's a Inspire That's a winning alliance. Discrepancy, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, 4 like, 4 to one ninety one. Yeah, the score. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, um, I mean, I guess it does happen with, like, a qualifying, regional qualifying tournament, but definitely. Yeah, and, and of course. I, was, mm -hmm. I was actually going to want to sit and chat about this for a sec this year. This year. Uh, what do you think of the fact that, like, New York is split into three regions, and they have, like, um, three different championships? See, so from what I've heard, like, I'm not too familiar with the region, but from what I've heard, we have these three championships. We don't have that many qualifying slots between them, right? I think it's just, like, two per two per championship um and at least for me i like to see depth in in terms of like the awards uh in the sense that i would like to see that 
um, winning the Lions first pick, winning the Lions second pick, move on. Even the finalist Lions captain, right? Like I understand that that's quite far down in the in the um, in the advancement criteria. But for me, at least, it sh- it. it, it, it I think that that shows a little more um, – that brings a little more dynamic competition to the world championship. And for that reason, I'm always more of a fan of a bigger tournament with more teams and more slots. Um, because if you're getting these Winning Alliance Captain Inspire Awards, Winning Alliance Captains Inspire Awards, Winning Alliance Captain Inspire Awards, you're only getting the very, I think, small section of the teams that have uniqueness. Um, because each award is looking at different things. It's not like each award is looking at the exact same thing. So by giving more uniqueness, I think that you get a better world championship. And for that reason, I think that I would like them to be combined. But of course, I understand that logistics may not happen. Yeah, well... Two things to bring up here real quick is, one, if you were to have a larger tournament, you would have to branch off into divisions, though. Otherwise, you're going to run into the same issue of not having enough matches, right? Absolutely. Because if you have a huge, huge tournament with one field, or you have to run multiple fields or something like that, right? Something like that has to happen in order to be that way. Also, coming from FRC, it absolutely blows my mind that a winning alliance does not qualify for championships. Like, that's just... Like you got, you got to just realize coming from FRC, just how crazy it is to hear something like that. Where we have wild cards, and you know, in many cases, the entire finalist alliance will qualify uh, for one of the world championships. So it's just, it's just crazy to hear on my end. Yep. Absolutely. See, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, there you go. But I, I do, I do agree with that. I think that the winning alliance really has brought. It, they bring a lot to the competition, right? They have they have their own uniquenesses. They have their own skills. They have their own everything. And I think that that should be respected and that should be sort of shown to the world and that should be sort of brought up, elevated um, by sending that entire alliance. Unfortunately, that's not how it is, of course. And I don't know what you think, Shishir, but I personally wouldn't mind if championship was even 500 teams, 600 teams. Agreed. Agreed. That, that doesn't bother me if you're going to be sending eight teams from every state. I mean, you're, everyone's going to be like, well, the champs are going to get less competitive. It, to be honest, is championship actually, and this is a totally different conversation, but is the first championship actually a championship? To me, right? it's, it's, more of like a, thing, it's more of a gala of like hanging out, competing. It's a robot expo. Who's the best. Robot expo, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah, that's the Championships thing. stopped being a, like a quote-unquote championship after 2016. When we ca- when we created two championships, the reason that two championships were created was because we wanted to have more exposure. And when it became an exposure thing, right. it's a competition, but at the same time, it's about bringing this message, um, like bro- like making the message broader. And like initially, sure, I had my reservations, but it's a valid point, right? First is about bringing that stem, and if we're bringing that stem component a larger championship obviously the top teams may rise to the top we can find different ways of making it competitive just like what frc does because i believe that there are actually more ftc teams than frc teams um like in the world so like frc has 600 teams that go to championships why can't FTC be like that and just just expand the program, uh, make it more of an exhibition? Because that's what First is trying to do um, from the get go, right? They're trying to make it an exhibit, like a, a huge exhibition. So why not make it bigger? Yeah, and kind of this will relate back to what we talked about two weeks ago on FTC Live. Is this is all about uh, the championship, but it's more of an expo. And the biggest thing that's wrong in FTC or one of the biggest things that's wrong in FTC is that teams do not stick around for that long. And if you, in my opinion, if you start sending more teams to championship, you're going to have more teams sticking around because it's easier to obtain that goal. It's easier to have that experience. It's still a championship. And I disagree with the person that just said this in in the chat. Not every team should go to Worlds. There's like 6,000 teams right now that I think – like five percent? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm doing my math wrong. I think it's like a percent go to worlds, right? Uh, Three twenty mm-hmm. of six thousand. Five percent. Okay, yeah, I was. I was right. That's right. You're right. Just five percent. To me, that's too little. If you have a five percent chance of getting the championship, there is a point of like, how long do you actually want to, to like be in the program? If you're, it, it took my team ten years to go to championship. Mm-hmm. That's fair. That's very fair. All right, well, on that note, let's go to the uh, great state of New Jersey to check out the New Jersey State Championship, uh, which was a two-division event. 
Uh, so the Parkway Division saw the number one alliance comprised of 99-71 Land Bros, uh, 98 and 11-6-97 winning and moving on to the event finals. Uh, the only undefeated team in the division was 99-71 Land Bros, and they had an OPR of 247. Uh, over in the Turnpike Division, uh, there were two teams that went 5-0, and and the winning alliance out of that division was the number three alliance, actually, uh, comprised of uh, 43-47 Nano Gurus, 72-44 Out of the Box, and 11-248 Cougars. Uh, so the winning alliance for the event was the number one alliance coming from the Parkway Division, which was 99-71, 98-89, and 11-6-97. Uh, and the Inspire Award winner for the event actually wasn't listed on the Orange Alliance. So if you know who the Inspire Award winner was, throw that in the chat, and congratulations to that team. Absolutely. <laughs> and of course, I mean, in this, we're obviously seeing the dominance of 9971. Like, I, I guess that's no surprise at this point. Um, second of the win. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think they got they got the uh, Pennsylvania, I think, right first. Yep. Um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, they're turning out, of course, to be a top team or he's turning out to be a top team. <laughs> um, but. I really don't see any surprises there. I'm really, really impressed by the consistency uh, that Landbros is putting out, and I can't wait to see how they st stack up at champs because um, they're really going to be one of that. They're going to be that top team. They're going to be right up there. Totally. You know, he's good. And for those that he don't know good. who Landbros are, it's one guy. And then he's yeah. got like two or three friends that help a lot on drive team and in the pits. Yep. It's really, really amazing thing to watch. So I think we're gonna move. Uh, we're gonna move right back down to the U.S. South. Um, so we're gonna start with the Missouri State Championship. Um, so at Missouri, there were some high expectation from this championship because um, we've been hearing a lot about Team Seventy Three Fifty Seven Titanium Tech. Um, this is a team that's really just dominated early this season. They've just constantly been up there in that OPR. They've constantly just been someone you've heard about, but. It's a team that nobody has taken a video of. Um, I was when I was doing my research, I was looking all around. I saw a lot of Reddit threads complaining that there were no videos of this team, but I never actually found a video of this team. So um, really, really cool stuff. Um, just to note, this team is um, the FTC division of FRC Team 1986, uh, Team Titanium. So um, a really, really strong program as a whole. Not really surprising that this FTC team is just so dominant. Um, so unsur unsurprisingly, ma they made it to the top of their division and out of their division um, with Team 6547, the Cobalt Colts, and 8461, Elementary, My Dear Boston, or Botson. Actually, I don't know what it was. Um, on the other division, Team, uh, we got some really heavy hitters. We got some real, um, uh, uh, I mean, pretty consistent names. We got Team 3409, the Astromex, um, and they pretty unsurprisingly dominated over here and picked team 4964 the Rolla Patriots another uh, another good name in this um, in this competition as well as team 9808 team chargers um, they actually team titanium tech actually lost their first finals match to the other division um, but they did bring it back with two win with two wins for the victory fortunately no um, no inspire award was shown uh, or no inspire award was recorded so what are your thoughts, Nathan, about having a team so dominant but just being almost invisible to the public's eye? Because that's something that I feel really is surprising. That's – yeah, I don't know how you do it. I feel like if you're that good, someone will have taken a video of you by now. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm not surprised based off the mm -hmm. fact that we don't have any videos of any other teams mm -hmm. uh, or not any other – a lot of other teams that we've been talking that's about tonight. Cool. I don't know. I think we're, what we're seeing just in general in FTC is a rise in the terms of the number of events that stream in media like ourselves. Um, so it's a continual process. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're soon probably going to not have a state championship that is not live streamed, uh, and that will be a requirement. So we will get to see all the great robots, but mm -hmm. it's... It's getting there. Absolutely. It's getting there. I think that's the thing. So, Tyler, I actually wanted to ask about your input on this. You've been with FRC for a long time. How have you seen the FRC progression? Because from what I've noticed, like whatever trajectory that FRC takes, FTC follows it just like quite a bit later. So, like, what have you seen in terms of like getting match videos out there and being publicly available? 
Well, so that's a good question. I think there's a two part thing, right? One is streams, and then the other is uh, actual match video for stuff, right? And getting the archive for that. And what what has happened in FRC is uh, there's somebody who works for Manchester named Alex Herod, uh, who decided to say, hey, I want to step up and do stuff like this because nobody was doing it in Manchester, right? Uh, and it just really came down to one really passionate individual, and there's other people supporting this, but this person was a brainchild for it, and said, you know what? This needs to happen. We need to have standardized webcasts. We need to find ways to archive. Let's do it, right? And this individual uh, essentially, uh, and I forget what Alex's position is. I think he's an engineer for FRC, and he essentially orchestrated a way that he came up with these kits for webcasts and then he found money uh, through grants uh, to get these webcast kits raised. So so if you ever go to an FRC event and it's a regional, uh, you'll see uh, actual this like this little server in a box thing that is actually the webcast kit for things, right? And Nathan can probably speak to this because I know he's a webcast operator. Uh, but uh, so, I mean, that's the way it works now. And, and the way that the FRC archives work is is very convoluted actually where it, every single stream that's going on that's a regional filters back through Manchester before it gets uh, put as an archive, which is so strange. Like instead of just having, uh, cause they use OBS, right? So instead of just having OBS just broadcast straight and, and upload that way, everything goes back to Manchester uh, and then gets uploaded for archives. Because I think I'm assuming there's a script or something that runs that allows it to be automatically uploaded that way. Uh, and it has caused issues in the past couple of weeks ago, all FRC streams went down uh, for a while. Yeah. And Nathan was at, the, uh, yeah, at the Midwest region. I mean, it happened to every event. It was, it was insane. And so there's some downfall, something like that, but uh, areas that are district events, uh, they are on their own for kits. They, they can mm-hmm. purchase the same kit that is used in FR, FRC regionals, but they have to pay for it. And it is a few thousand dollars to get the equipment for something like the multiple thousands of dollars. Uh, so it's, it's very, you know, it, it's, it's an interesting way, but essentially it was just somebody from Manchester stepped up and just standardized things. But to answer one of your questions from before you said, you know, what was it like in the past? Well, honestly, I think we were limited a lot by technology uh, for things. You go back uh, to like when I was in high school, which was, you know, the early two thousands for things. I mean, if you got a webcast, that was incredible. And it, it was NASA who was doing it. I mean, that's where mm. the technology came from, is that it was originally NASA would send a truck out to an event to, to broadcast via satellite for something, right? Which is absolutely wow. nuts. And then you look at where we are today, and now we have, you know, dedicated wired connections for things. Um, and, and district events like FIM are in high schools, and they make it work with, uh, you know, internet from a high school. And they get it to work every single time with, a, you know, maybe a couple of hiccups, but it, it does work. Uh, so there's, in my opinion, you know, the standardized things, the, the difficult thing is you're then requiring people to purchase kits to stand. You know, if you truly want to standardize something, you have to get kits or something like that in order to make that happen. Otherwise, it's just you're just telling them what to do and hoping that they follow through. Mm-hmm. Well, and I'll share, though, that like it's expensive to put together one of those streaming carts. I mean, the FRC one, I was sort of going through it with someone recently and we're pretty sure that they're like 20 upwards of 20 K probably even more. Um, and we, we've, I've heard though that first got a bunch of grants, as you said. So, um, it was pretty, um, it's pretty cost effective for first to do. Uh, but I'll say that for Chicago and Illinois, uh, I've been putting together, um, event carts, as I'm calling them. So the, for live streaming, for, uh, scorekeeping and for audio and those are running at about five thousand dollars it's pretty reasonable to run a and those cards can be able to run a two field event uh those are going to do streaming for two fields so there's gonna be i think there's gonna be like seven cameras like eight tablets and a bunch of other things you're gonna need to run events like five monitors um so it is doable uh it just costs money and i think that's one of the things that ftc doesn't really have versus frc uh, and then they also don't have like first running any of the events. The only event run by first is championship. So mm-hmm. that just makes it hard to totally standardize unless you're kind of going to change the whole structure of FTC, which I don't mind doing, but I don't know if there hasn't been a push to do that by any individual yet. It comes down to money, right? Like where does the money come from for something like that? And even for FRC, you got, they had to get grants for it. It's not like, you know, the, unfortunately the millions and millions of dollars that first has in their pockets that they don't do anything with can't go towards this for some reason. And if you look at their financial records, they have millions and millions of dollars in liquid assets that are available that could be used for something like this. 
uh, but they have it earmarked or they do something with it or I, I don't know what they do with it. But, uh, you know, unless first wants to step up and say, hey, you know, every state we're going to send you X amount of kits based on how many teams you have. I mean, look, think about the investment that would be from first perspective. That's let's say everyone is five thousand dollars and you have 50 states and some states require more than one kit. You're talking a half a million dollars, essentially, you need. in kits, mm -hmm. right? Now so, we need 10. Yeah. Yeah. So, so wow. over a half million dollars then probably. Mm -hmm. Insane. Yeah, Insane. yeah no, and I was gonna I say it's it not it's not easy. Somebody mentioned, uh, you know, just YouTube stream it easy. No, that you don't. I'm sorry, man. If you have not done a stream for an event before, there are way more things you have to worry about. Like like we're experiencing right now, like bandwidth issues and you know many other things that go into streams that you have to worry about and, and drop packets and everything else with that that goes into this. Plus, you have to find a way to splice match video and do things like that, too. There is way more than just saying, hey, I'm just going to press a button that streams to YouTube. It is way more complex uh, than something like that to get a consistent stream going. Yep, and I mean, I will say, though, if you do, if you're at an event, there is no stream and you have the ability to, there is nothing wrong with this on your phone firing up a YouTube stream. We all know it's not going to be the best thing in the world, but it's something. Um, but definitely where uh, FTC needs to go is um, doing a nice stream and I'll respond to his name's Nathan in the chat tackle bat it's not actually that hard uh, I have put together for just Chicago alone with I think about $400 um, uh, 13 foot tripods webcams and smaller uh, like standard six foot tripods and webcams uh, to run at just the Chicago league meets we put one in each corner one or one in like opposite from each other and then the big tall cam and you kind of switch around. I did, I ran that at two events. One event, it was horrible because we had a bad internet connection. The other event, the audio was horrible because I screwed up a setting, but it's not that hard. Um, mm -hmm. Just make, making sure you just don't mess up the settings. So you're not hearing audio from my computer instead of the actual mixer. Um, but, but from a consistency issue, that's difficult to do. If you expect every yeah. event to run it that way, I mean, audio, you bring up audio. Audio is a, is a huge problem that so many people don't think about. You know, and, you know, how do you get field sounds in? How do you uh, get the announcer microphone in? How do you get other, you know, other uh, just house audio to get in, like music and that sort of thing? There's a lot that goes into that that I think people don't think about. And it's not hard to write up documentation for it, but the implementation at a wide scale that would be required for FRC is much more difficult. Oh, no, I totally agree. Um, I just realized that we don't have a, we haven't started our giveaway right now while we continue about this. Uh, Shishir. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to come up with a keyword for our giveaway? We're giving All away right. hyperhubs. So, so uh, how about we do hype? Uh, H-Y-P-E. Hypes. There you go. There's your keyword. Uh, two people will win a two-pack of hyperhubs. So hype is your keyword. Um, you know, I definitely think it, we're, we're getting there with FTC. Uh, TOA now, if you don't know, has a whole streaming setup similar to the Blue Alliance. Um, so slowly but surely we're getting there i saw a lot of events being streamed this year i think we probably streamed uh, i gotta think maybe 35 40 events 30 wow. 30 probably more so uh on the orange alliance channels uh while well, a lot of those were michigan still that's an event streaming so yeah 35 or 40 mm -hmm. and then another probably 20 to 4 20 to 30 events that were non-toa events that ended up on the site um but wow, that, that's it's impressive. Getting there. Yeah, it's getting it there. Is. You gotta absolutely take yeah, willingness we... from volunteers. Mm -hmm. It's true. All right, so I think we're gonna just move down to Louisiana for a bit. Um, so we're gonna they they were the they they actually just had their regional championship. Um, and one thing that was surprising is that even though it was a regional championship, it only had twenty teams. So because because of that, we only had two team alliances. Um, <clears throat> Team 6448, the Blue Jays, were ranked first, and they picked the regional powerhouses 14374 Dark Matter to win the tournament over Team 14276 Astrobots and 13017 Event Horizons. In addition, congratulations to 13017 Event Horizon for gold silver with the Inspire Award. That's fantastic. All right, so now we're going to jump overseas uh, and talk about a few international events. We have not really been doing this. So we're going to talk about two events today that we had data for, which is the Netherlands and the UK South, but also in the month of March, uh, the UK North event occurred, Romania happened, Poland, Brazil, uh, all had their international championships. 
Um, so we're going to talk about, so in the Netherlands, so just going to run through down and say with, uh, the winning alliance captain was team number 10, team space. Uh, their first pick was team seven, pink to the future. I know that pink to the future was at the championships last year. They wear all pink suits, really cool outfit. I heard they were really awesome guys. Um, I don't know if you met them last year, Shashir. Uh, no, unfortunately I didn't. Uh, their thir- second pick. Uh, was team number one, the Encrypted Gentleman. Uh, keep in mind that these team numbers are specific to the country uh, because international teams have different numbers. Uh, then the Inspire Award winner was team number 10, Team Space. So congrats to them because they were the winning alliance captain and the Inspire winner. Um, the two highest ranked teams were Team Space uh, and uh, team number nine, Highland Lynxes. Uh, the final scores, if you're just curious about competitiveness, for the Netherlands was uh, 330 to 201 in finals one, then 309 to 216 in finals two. So pretty competitive. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, very competitive. Then we're going to move down to the United Kingdom. I believe that's down, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the winning alliance there, winning alliance captain there was team number 78. Uh, their first pick was team number eight, then team number five. Uh, um, the Inspire Award winner was team number two. Uh, then the scores in the finals were actually a lot less competitive than the Netherlands. Uh, we saw the finals one score being 90 to 75 and the finals two score, uh, was 153 to 93, uh, ranked number one was 78, ranked number two was number eight, which was their first pick. Uh, I don't have any names for those teams, just numbers. Um, so Yeah. Uh, do we want to move on to our dis- a little more discussion well, this year? I just I just want to bring up the discussion that uh, the Netherlands is definitely not higher than what the UK is, and or north of what the to... UK is. So. Well, it, this is UK South. Well, like Ooh. okay, if you were to say UK yeah, no, South, it, it's, it's, not, it's like right. it's like perpendicular or so it's, parallel. To... So it's up. It's parallel. Okay, <laughs> I, I was trying to. Again, we were talking about this pre-show. My school doesn't teach me geography. Still should know it, but um, fair enough. Across. I, Africa. For, for those, some context for those who don't know what's going on behind the scenes, uh, Idaho is apparently originally a South uh, region recap, and that had to get changed, right, Nathan? So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, yeah. Tyler. Um, so, something really cool that happened in FTC just about, I think it was three, two weeks ago now, um, was Illinois hosted what we are calling the Robot Rumble at the Central Illinois FRC Regional. Uh, one of the teams that competed there, I'm pretty sure, is watching right now. Um, so at the Robot Rumble, what happened, I'll explain this quickly, is we interspersed FTC and FLL matches within FRC, so there was zero downtime at the event. Um, so it went, uh, FRC, FRC match 62, FTC, FRC match 63, FLL, FRC match 64, FTC, so on and so forth. Um, personally, I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, I think the guys at Turbocharge could probably say something about this. Since they actually won the event, they were our winning alliance uh, after uh, six total matches. Um, each team played four. Um, so, Tyler, I don't know if you have already. Uh, but could you play that uh, second clip that I put in uh, for, like, the first 30 seconds with the sound on? Oh, yep. Right after this, we're going to uh, watch a uh, video with uh, Dan Green, who's the executive director of First Illinois, when he, where he will explain what's going on. Uh, the video, I think, that just about to pop up is uh, kind of just showing the transition between FRC and FTC. So just to describe this for everybody on here, uh, so the event gets done, right? And they do the scores for FRC, and then apparently the audio gets muted in this uh, occasionally. But then that gets done, and then they go right over the FTC. And as Nathan was saying, then they go back and forth, essentially. So um, from being at the Central Illinois Regional, I thought it was a really cool experience, uh, right, Nathan? Like, it was pretty pretty neat to just to see this back and forth happen where – uh, both, you know, all three type of programs get recognized. Uh, people who are in one program can see what's going on with the other. There's so much segmentation in, you know, FLL, FR, FTC, and FRC that to be able to see this kind of transition uh, between each one is, is a pretty neat experience, isn't it? Oh, it was awesome. Uh, I was volunteering at the, went up to the regional just for the FTC portion. 
Um, you yeah, know, it, it was great as a volunteer. It was awesome just to kind of see the programs interact. If I was there as a team member, I would have loved it. Just being able to compete within uh, an FRC event. Uh, I personally think it's more events should do that. I've talked to some other people about this before. I think just generally it would be cool um, if we could intersperse uh, more FTC and FRC events. I could see state championships running alongside an FRC regional. Logistics of that are insane, but at the same time, it would be really cool, really, really cool. Um, so I think what Tyler might have queued up is a video with uh, Executive Director of Illinois, Dan Green, where he's kind of going to chat about this a little more. I don't know if you're ready for that, Tyler. Yep. Here we go. Here at the Central Illinois Regional, I'm here with the Executive Director of First Illinois, Dan Green. And Dan, we got something spectacular going on here. We have FRC, FTC, and FLL all going on here at once. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Well, we're, we brought all three of the programs together because we're trying to show how this progression of programs works for FIRST. We think this is a really good opportunity to bring them all together, go from one to the other, put them next to each other, show how awesome each one of the programs is, and we're just going back and forth, and the kids are loving it, all the, all the volunteers are loving it. It's been, so far, it's been a great experience. What, what does it mean when you look at, you know, high schoolers now get to see more of what the elementary schools do, but even more importantly, I think, the younger kids get to see what's to come even further. So what's the importance of that in regards to kind of building even more uh, progression through Illinois First. Yeah, well, that's our goal, obviously, is especially getting the younger kids that are doing the Lego robotics uh, to see what they can do when they get older. And when they get older, they can go to FTC, they can go to FRC. So that's what we're hoping to see. Very cool. Well, fantastic event here at Central Illinois. Can't wait to see more of what's going on. Thanks, Dan. All right. Thanks, Dan. So after uh, hearing that chat, what do you guys think of uh, doing kind of these kinds of things at uh, other events this year? What do you think about kind of interspersing the programs? Dude, I would love it. See, for me, like, again, I keep harping back to, like, how FIRST wants to increase exposure because, like, these are the ways that FIRST can do it so effectively, right? Like, I know that... <laughs> Rest in peace. Um, all right, I guess, well, Shishi, are you back? Oh, sorry about that. Did, did, did I, uh, did I cut yeah, out? We heard uh, nothing. <laughs> all right, my bad. Let me, let me start from the beginning, right? So I would love this. The reason I would love this is because the way that first is always talking about things is always about that increasing exposure. And this is a very unique way that that can be done because I know that in F in like in Oregon in FTC and um, uh, like FLL programs, the only way that these programs have exposure to FRC is when the uh, affiliate partner of Oregon's like, hey, can an FRC come FRC team come and demonstrate to the FTC and FLL teams, right? So that's like a way of it happening. But like you're not seeing the action of FRC, you're not seeing the excitement of FRC. You're seeing a bunch of bored high schoolers stand there for four hours driving their robot like within a five foot place, right? It's not the same experience. So by doing something like this, I think it would be amazing as an opportunity to get these students in excited and involved of progressing through this entire program. Oh yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And I know that one of the goals of Illinois and We'll see for future years if this is going to take place here. Sorry, one is um, kind of to show first what they like an option of what they could do at uh, championship. Because I know that watching the championship finals, there is huge amounts of downtime. Uh, oh yeah. There's also zero recognition outside of I don't know that anyone have that zero recognition given to FLL students. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like it doesn't exist. FLL Junior just doesn't exist. It's just like a thing that happens at championship, but there's no recognition given. Uh, I know that they've recently kind of changed the way a little bit how the championship works, but if you really wanted to get back to it and really do something awesome for the program, it'd be great to run the FRC round robin. That's a lot of teams, though, but it'd be great to run the round robin in um, the football arena or baseball stadium and FTC division finals and finals. And then grab the top, I don't know, like six, eight FLL teams and have them run matches in between uh, and just do something to make it a festival of first instead mm -hmm. of like, cool, our other programs are over. We're going to run two FTC matches and then the thing, FRC. Um, mm -hmm. Give it an experience 
for all of the teams. But, but even for FRC, you're only getting three matches out of that. You're only getting three yeah. matches. Yeah. So like, I mean, the whole thing is kind of a kind of a just a joke for the most part that you're having. You're sending tens of thousands of people over into a different venue to watch five matches max or six matches yeah. max, right? Like, yep. you, I mean, you're totally right. I mean, there has to be this this kind of this experience for all. And to just have, you know, really just FRC on the centerpiece for everything is just not – it doesn't serve the other programs. Well, either either completely sever it, right, and make them their own championships for things or completely integrate it. And this, like, this halfway in between, yeah, it's just not it, – it, it's not cohesive. It doesn't make sense for people who don't know – you know, for people who are in FRC, why would you ever care about what's going on in the other programs, right? I mean, that's the honest truth. There is no incentive for FRC people to care about FTC or FLL other than that they should, you know, try to get teams and people to move up. And first, to me, first response to that is like, well, you know, it, you know, you should care because they're in the other programs and that sort of thing. Like, the, it's just not a reality of how it is, right? It's Absolutely. just, it, it needs to be some way that everybody can see what's going on or completely make them their own thing so, team, so programs can have their own pride. FLL championships is a joke. Like, if you guys think FTC is bad, go watch FLL. It's on a concrete floor. There are no seats. All you can do is crank your head up and look at the screen and hope that you see your team competing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I don't even think there's a scoring system for FL. Well, because um, there wasn't one at the central uh, at the Robot Rumble. Um, and one thing I just thought about now is, if first really wants to make this a championship, you can run the round robin, run all of the semi or run the division finals finals for FTC, make the actual finals for FTC and FRC like best of five or best of four or something, or best of. Uh, yeah, best of best five. Of five. Best of five. Um, and get like ESPN to stream it or to put it on their like a channel, like put it thrown on ESPN two. That's where you could really do something really awesome to first. Um, that also costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're not going to get on there for free. Vex did the same thing a few years ago, and that cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, I okay. I guess I guess you're going to be paying. I guess there's no. Yeah. I don't know. You, you pay for publicity. That's the way that it will always work, right? Um, but I, I agree with, like, your other points in the sense that, like, yeah, it should become more exciting and it should be um, – it should just be more of an event. Um, Tyler, I have a very quick question. This is a little bit of a segue away from FTC, but were you at the 2017 Houston Championships? No, uh, that, like that, I was okay. not at 2017 Houston. Sorry. I, I mean, I, okay. watched, I watched all of it, but I was not at yeah. that one. So here, here's the deal, right? Like, what, from what I understand, like, I was there and, like, I was also watching the FRC a bit. Um, but, like, it was it was terrible. Um, like, everyone had complaints about Houston Minute Maid Park that year. Um, but I thought it was terrible just because they didn't do things right. Not because there were so many matches happening at Minute Maid. And I feel like sort of the the shifting the, the, the tournament away and only doing uh, the two matches, the two final final matches at Minute Maid Park was the wrong response um, to, the, to the way that first ran it in 2017. Um, and I feel like by doing that, again, you're sort of alienating and you're sort of mitigating the impact of sort of this championship wrap up. Um, just like I, I remember watching one of the recaps by Mr. Clint, I think uh, from F, from like uh, 1619 or something. He was like, if my team like the only way I'm going to Minute Maid Park is if my team is playing on that field. Right. And like I totally understand that and I totally agree with that because like there's no point of going there. There's no point of celebrating this if there's nothing to be celebrated or if there's nothing of that much value to be celebrated. So I'm going to be honest with you, though. I think that died down a little bit last year. Um, there was a big issue with Minute Maid the first year because, I mean, uh, there was all these delays. It was hot outside. People were going in ambulances because of dehydration. Uh, honestly, I didn't really see much of that last year in 2018. It seemed like there, were the, there was a decent chunk of people at the event. Uh, and it seemed like most of the issues were taken care of in regards to those type of logistics. Now, there are some mm-hmm. other ones, like why the hell they still hire that production crew that they have who absolutely <laughs> botched, uh, you know, Minute Maid Park is beyond me, like things like that. Like, I mean, for those, I, if you watched championships last year, hopefully you saw the infamous microphone moment, right? Oh, yeah. You know, you literally finals get, match two, you yeah. missed autonomous because you see a goddamn microphone. Yeah. Sorry for the like, like, Does like, show really no. not do that? 
No, the show already does not do Houston Championship. Show already does Detroit, and they do for for those who don't know, Show already is a production crew that's typically contracted to do FRC events uh, at regionals, and they are absolutely phenomenal. But they decided to go with a different company for Houston, and like the last two years have just been awful. Like uh, how unless they ha- have already paid these people, the fact that they're still paying them to do Houston Championships is embarrassing and a waste of our money that we're paying as teams to go to uh, to go to championships. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, Show Ready does every regional, right? Uh, or it does almost they, every they regional. They do the majority of regionals. Is, is the way so it, it. it's weird to think like Show Ready has done champs forever. They've done regionals for a while. Like you're just gonna hire someone else, and they're gonna like figure this event out. Well, I mean, it's the, the championship. Like, the, there could be other reasons for that too. Yes, I, don't, I don't necessarily it, know the, it, the reasons. It, for it could it, be right. the fact that two champs are right in a row, and that the show ready team can't handle two event two of like insane events in a row. That's a very plausible That's thing. Um, but like, just get it right. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the championship. What I also don't get is like. Who is actually running? Like, it's, it's a production guy running what's going on the stream for championship. Like, why don't you have someone do the webcast stuff? Like, that's always great. It doesn't really end up bad. <laughs> someone who knows first. Um, yeah, it just it sucked looking at a microphone. I wanted to see 254s for Cube Autonomous. Um, but why doesn't – I'll just take a quick – we're going to answer a quick question from Chad or do a quick discussion – and then roll for our giveaway and say goodnight. So, uh, yes. skid keep, uh, whatever. Uh, why doesn't FTC do round robin? Uh, like, why are they stuck on doing bracket type elimination? So we kind of talked about this on our last show. Um, we don't know why they don't. I mean, there's only two divisions, so it's hard to do um, a round robin with two divisions. Um, Personally, I think there should be four divisions, or you should at least do eight alliances in each division. Um, that way you're just getting more teams in the finals, more opportunity to be competitive. Uh, if you went to four divisions, you could easily do a round robin. Or, well, not easily, but you well, could still Well, it's not do- a round robin again, right? A round robin... Wait, can you? Maybe. Maybe. I don't remember. Um, yeah, you could. You, you could. could just shift them. So red one, red yeah. two, red one. And essentially, just go in a square. Every team plays four, ma- Every team plays four matches. You're going to be with the same... No, you're never going to be with the same. Yeah, you're not going to be with the same. Yeah, you're going to face, yeah. off, face off against each of the other alliances. Yeah. Yeah. Always paired mm-hmm. with another alliance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, I, I don't really know. It's just, I guess, the way that this has been run. Like, I, I unfortunately, I guess that that is our limitation. So. You could do six divisions of 50. There you go. 300 teams each champs. It'd be yeah. awesome. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and you get the depth. You sort of get each team uh, like there's a little less depth, so um, you can sort of allow these teams to sort of rise up a bit. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Yeah. All we can do is suggest. Hopefully, someone's watching and they go, "Hey, they had some great ideas." But we've been spewing great ideas since uh, beginning of September. <laughs> um, well, uh, let's roll for our giveaway. Let's see yeah, who I think the that's, two lucky uh, people are tonight. All right, so we're going to roll twice uh, for the giveaways. Don't forget, if you do win, uh, that you do have to make sure you reach out to First Updates Now, either uh, in our Discord or right here on Twitch. And by the way, make sure you check out our Discord, uh, as we have now over 1,500 people, both an FRC and FTC, uh, that are now in our Discord, and we would love to have you join our community. Uh, it is a very, uh, we'll say, civil community uh, compared to some other ones that are out there. You won't see some of the uh, unfortunate things that are posted in certain uh, discords that way so uh, so we do keep it very uh, very tight knit that way which sometimes limits conversations but on the other hand it also keeps it very clean as well too uh, so with that said uh, we're going to be drawing for the uh, awesome uh, set of hyper hubs so I think each winner is getting two is that correct Nathan correct okay so uh, once again hype was the keyword to do and our first winner is going to be there we go roll for it uh, well, you can't win, Nathan, so we're going to roll again. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but it is fun when that's our hosts the, win for things. That's the third giveaway I've won in a month. Nice. So lots of radio emotes and chats for that. Um, but our real first winner is going to be FTC8417. Congratulations uh, on that. So make sure, once again, you reach out to uh, First Updates now, either on uh, Twitch here or uh, in our Discord. We need your first name, last name, mailing address, zip code, city, all that stuff like that. 
Um, always have to say it because people always message me and say, what do I need? And that's the stuff we need. Uh, email too, because sometimes they will send tracking info. Second winner is going to be uh, TLA uh, LVANI. Congratulations. Uh, who is a subscriber? So clearly we've rigged it at least for one of our subscribers uh, went in there because their subscribers do get 5x chance to win. So congratulations uh, to both our giveaway winners. And thanks a lot to GoBuilda, who makes some awesome stuff. Go check them out uh, at GoBuilda. Uh, dot com for lots of cool stuff that you can get for FTC. And then keep in mind that this giveaway probably won't come for a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if Go Build is kind of slammed. Most giveaways, coming up, but most giveaways are know. about uh, three to six weeks, just depending. So be patient with that, but you can always message me uh, to follow up on it, and I will always uh, find out for you either way. Don't count on using these uh, hyper hubs at Chips. Yes, that, that would be that. an action <laughs> statement. Don't count on that. Count on using them for next season or off season. Um, well, uh, thank you for all of the follows and subscriptions we have received today. Uh, don't forget that you can subscribe for free if you or your parents have Twitch Prime. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Recap. Uh, if you want to stay connected with what Fun FTC is doing, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Fun FTC and join our Discord through the link in chat. Um, we don't really talk about this a lot, but we have a Patreon, guys. Um, I, yes, it is in the Nightbot chat that just came out a moment ago. Um, if you love what we do, you want to help us continue what we do, uh, give us a few dollars a month. If you're able to give us one, two, three, four, five, uh, subscriptions are awesome. But uh, if you're on Patreon, that goes direct to us. Um, so it's, you can just help out for like the price of a cup of coffee. Have one less cup of coffee tomorrow and give a few dollars to us. Um, it just helps us do what we do. Uh, we don't make any money off this. Tyler doesn't really make any money off this. We use it for, <laughs> uh, we use it for advertisements online. We use it for uh, swag for our hosts and uh, for giveaways for you guys when we do like fun magnet giveaways. Uh, so thank you for being awesome viewers. So on uh, behalf of myself, Shishir, and our producer Tyler working behind the scenes, I would like to thank you for tuning in tonight. Oh, wait. Yeah, quick thing. I Tyler. do want to... I. I, I yeah. just do want to mention one thing before we uh, end. So um, as you guys may know, we publish this quite a, quite a bit. We're doing something called Reveal Night. And um, Reveal Night is just sort of a... Uh, we're trying to conglo- like uh, c- uh, get all the uh, robot reveals together and uh, really just show them to the community because we know that you guys have worked really hard on your robots and you, we know that you really want to show it. And we want to give a bigger platform for this. So um, we are going to be... Um, we're trying to host this Reveal Night. Um, we can send out that link. Uh, we can send out that link soon. Um, but, uh, like, so one of the things, just, we have a few requirements that we, the, these reveals haven't been uh, shown to the public and whatnot. And, um, uh, so we are trying to get bit, like for this show to be successful, we do need around 20 reveals or so. So please, 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 um, get, get that reveal in, um, our deadline. What we're trying to do is, uh, the seventh. So this is uh, this Sunday. Um, we're trying to get that in by midnight, I think central, and then, uh, we're going to show them on Wednesday. So please get those robot reveals in. We'd love to show them. We'd love to discuss them because we know that you guys have worked so hard on them. Yep. So just just a reminder that yeah, we are going to set a threshold for that, um, and we know that for some teams it's doable, for some teams it's not. Uh, so if you submit a reveal video and we do not end up having a reveal night, we will still show your reveal video at some point as well too. So just a heads up, it's not going to go to waste or anything like that. We'll make sure it gets shown before uh, championships. We do have a championship uh, preview show. I think the Monday before the Houston championship, if I remember correctly. Uh, So if we end up not doing a reveal night, which is possible, just being very transparent with that, uh, we will make sure we do show it on that Monday before uh, championships as well. Absolutely. So please submit for reveal night. It will be pretty awesome. Uh, If you're not attending the championship, uh, you can still submit your reveal as long as it's not been revealed before. Though preference, if we get a whole lot of reveals, Preference in terms of timing will go to teams attending championship. Well, we'll show. Uh, we will show them all. I promise you, we'll show yeah, them all. We will show them all okay. in different places. We'll show them all. Yes. Um, so, Ishan, you have missed the giveaway. We are ending the show in a moment. The giveaway was hyper hubs, uh, from courtesy of Go Build Up. So, <laughs> I'll say that again on behalf of myself, Shishir, and our producer Tyler, working behind the scenes. I would like to thank you for tuning in. Please submit your robot reveal. Please. Sub- Please apply for the Chicago Robotics Invitational. Um, we will see you at championship or you're going to be at championship. So tune in next Wednesday for the reveal show and tune in uh, a week from this upcoming Monday for our uh, world championship preview. All right. See ya. 
We need your help to keep fun at Loud, Live, and Independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.